everyone and welcome back and today we're going to continue our look at QNAT now so we're going to be looking at that brand new TS351 and we're going to be looking today primarily at hybrid desk station because so many of you pick the QNAT NAS brand range because of that useful HDMI port. And there's a few things that I want to discuss today on this subject. One, I want to talk about why there's an HDMI port. Two, I want to talk about how you get it prepped. And three, what it's capable of. So first and foremost, why? Well, an HDMI port on a NAS is, you know, if you're watching a lot of multimedia, if you want to use the, uh, the files on your NAS, and access them in a much more visual way, an HDMI port can be incredibly useful because so many of you don't want to rely on just network access. You want to have real-time access to those files on a local level. And with so many, uh, so much of data these days being more visual based from movies to pictures and more, the idea of a NAS that gives you both network and internet access and access via HDMI, the most popular visual um, output right now, is understandable indeed. Next, how do you set it up? Well, if you caught my previous video about when we were talking about the read and write, uh, during a RAID rebuild and all of my videos on this particular NAS to do with creating user groups and creating multiple users, then you'll have remembered that I installed the hybrid desk station application. But for you, those out there that didn't watch that video, and let's face it, it's probably a lot of you, what I'm going to do is show you exactly what to do. Once you get your QNAP NAS set up for the first time, and if it is a NAS from QNAP that has an HDMI port, in the app center you will find an application called hybrid desk station. And indeed in the latest versions of the QNAP software, HD Station is a, is a ready to download directly from the desktop. You'll just see this symbol grayed out with an arrow. Once you install it, the application has its own back end where you can install loads of, multi, uh, of applications for hybrid desk station. Because, and this is the key second point here, an HDMI port on a QNAP NAS isn't just about being able to watch your movies. You can do so, so much with that HDMI port. And indeed, the NAS takes on an almost second operating system and second access point from that HDMI port. And as you can see here, I've installed loads of these applications ranging from using it as a web browser with a keyboard and mouse directly from your home on your TV to using it to browse Facebook, to watching your TV and media and movies, to watching Plex movies and your entire Plex database over HDMI, not the internet, which is important, to accessing the entire QNAP desktop interface that you see here, or using it for surveillance. Alongside this, there's third party applications such as Skype for communication using the Skype protocol. So again, the Skype app, I've got to say, is a little bit hiccupy, it's not great. But in the times that I have used it where it's worked, I'm able to communicate with other users via my TV and the QNAP NAS wherever they are in the world on their mobile phone and more. On top of that, Spotify, Super Tux, which I believe is an emulation of the uh, Mario game, so again, a bit dodgy. Wesnos is uh, an RPG game, and there's other stuff too, and of course, YouTube. So, oh, and LibreOffice, a word, doc um, a word editing software that you may be familiar with. So all of these are available via that HDMI port and you click and install the ones that you want to use, and then from there, you then connect your HDMI device. Now, rather than use a capture card for this video, I'm also gonna show you another neat little trick with the HD Station application, and that is, the HD Station application can not only be used over HDMI, you can access the visual interface over the network and the internet. I know what you're thinking, why? But take my word for it. If you're running a virtual machine, for example, and you're connecting a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor to your QNAP NAS and using the system resources to run it as a Linux PC or a Windows or Android VM, this gives you the option to not only access it locally with a keyboard, mouse and monitor, but if you're far away and you've got access to 4G or Wi-Fi, you can then access that HDMI and your virtual machine or whatever you're using it for via the internet and network as well. So as you can see, I've set up remote desktop here, and if I switch to my other tab, we've now got exactly what you will see from that HDMI port. So via the HDMI port, the very first time you install the software for the first time, this is what you see. So if you were connected via a TV or whatever, this is what you'll see, but for the sake of this video, I'm using remote IP, but again, doesn't matter. So. Straight away, from those that do remember my previous video, you'll know that I created lots of user accounts with different admin rights to different folders. So 
every single user of your NAS can use their login information to get into the QNAP NAS via the HDMI port. But don't worry, you can just set it up by default to log in automatically into one of these users if you see fit. So if we use this admin account and we log in using the keyboard in front of me, but again, you can use the mouse which will pull up this keyboard at the bottom of the screen or use a simple keyboard mouse or even the remote control that most QNAPs arrive with. If we click auto login, that means we'll never have to do this every time. You can log out later. And if we click OK, it will make our way into the HDMI interface and hybrid desk station on the QNAP NAS. So as you can see, it's not dissimilar to an Android tablet. And again, if you're using a remote control, and we'll use the keyboard and mouse here, you can flick between all the different options via HDMI. And this is what you will see on your TV. And remember, the NAS during all of this can still be accessed by all your other users via the internet and the network as they see fit. This isn't a single user task environment. This is complete multitasking. And this is why HDMI NAS is so interesting. Because QNAP doesn't ask you to pick between network, internet, and local. It gives you all of them at the same time. Now, do check out my other videos where I've gone into much, much more detail about almost all of these applications. The one that a lot of you care about the most is, of course, the Plex Home Theater. I haven't set up Plex on this NAS, so unfortunately this is probably going to be a great demonstration at this point. Also, if there's any glitches on screen, a lot of that you can put down to my accessing this over IP and not via HDMI, and that could be a latency uh, problem. But right now, because I haven't set up a Plex Media Server, it can't find my Plex Media Server environment. So again, remember, if you're using the official QNAP remote, you can utilize the home key to go right the way back to the desktop environment and make our way back to the primary layout. And what we'll do is we're gonna make our way back and go through some of the other apps. Here we are back on the desktop here, and from here we can look at any other apps that we want to look at. So again, do check out the other video to tell you more, but for example, let's go for the YouTube app. And the YouTube application, for those that have utilized a lot of the app for mobile phones, Android, iOS, PlayStation, Xbox, that sort of thing, this is the very, very similar application. So straight away, it hasn't been logged in, so this is the default layout. And again, you're probably not gonna hear sound, but let's do a search here. And you know what? Let's be fantastically arrogant. Let's look up NAS Compares and Span TV. Here we are, let's look at round one, day one of CBIT. And of course, once again, because we're watching this over IP, over the network, it's not gonna be as smooth as HDMI on its own, so sorry about the juttery nature of this. But this is our video from early this year from CBIT. Myself talking on that big wheel, I'll be honest, a little bit scary. And again, don't worry too much about the juttery nature of this, that is largely down to the IP. In fact, this might even be affecting the recording of this video. So I'm gonna come out and maybe show you one more application on the hybrid desk station platform. And we're back here on the platform here, and again, I'll show you one more application before we go. And again, we can access the general file layout of our NAS if we want with the HD station file, sorry, HD station's file station application. Again, we can access QTS, via the HDMI port if we want, but again, it's not very organic to use that. Or we can use some of uh, the QNAP's own multimedia apps to play our own stuff. Now remember, you can unofficially install Kodi on your QNAP NAS if you like, and from there, access all the media you want. But in the meantime, you can use Video Station HD or HD Station, uh, sorry, HD Player in act, uh, to set up and watch Kodi-related uh, Cody similar XMBC uh, based media. But again, not the smoothest situation at the moment because I haven't put a lot of media on this. So again, I do recommend QNAP NAS and their HDMI ports because of the sheer weight of advantages. And if you head over to a lot of the community forums, you can find out even more uh, applications, homebrew, free and otherwise, that you can install on your QNAP NAS. So right now we're going into HD Player to watch any media that's on our QNAP NAS. And again, there we go, we can set up, but it will always go into there, we'll enable the binding, and this does a scan of the stuff on your QNAP NAS. And right now, it's just using the arrow keys, and we just wanna set up the picture, 
We're just going to agree to all of those, but again, it's that's just a safety check there to make sure everything's still in the screen where it's supposed to be. And we'll come out of that, and now we can access our media. And again, it looks a little dated, so I still kind of recommend installing Kodi. I know it's unofficial, but I would still kind of go ahead and recommend that. And then, of course, we go into the settings and you can change all the directories for your media. Now, so once again, this is slightly dated looking, but again, you don't have to use this and there is a lot of third party applications available. Let's ex exit that and make our way back to the desktop form. And from here, we're gonna wrap things up about HD Station. We're gonna do a couple more videos involving this NAS and some of the utility of the QNAP NAS. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I do recommend QNAP with regards to HDMI output on a NAS. I do think it's something that other NAS brands could stand to learn from and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. But thank you so much. I'll see you next time.